guys you're welcome back again to our, our channel in this particular experiment we're going to be answering the NACO physics practical question for 2022 and it promises to be an interesting one in this experiment we have a cantilever which we clamped at point 10 you can see from one end of the meter rule at 10 cm this is just a bench a stool or a bench right using a g clamp clamp a meter rule at the 10 cm mark such that 90 percent of the rule will protrude you can see here these are the other parts of the meter rule we need another a, another meter rule the second one here held using a, a retort stand so here is a retort stand um, holding the second meter rule which we clamp standing vertical this one is standing horizontal and then we insert a pin at the extreme of this particular horizontal meter rule to serve as a pointer for us in this particular experiment you can use any material that is suitable for you plasticine or whatever to hold it such that it will serve as a pointer as you're seeing here and then for the question under consideration as you see the procedure there the mass is going to be hung at point 80 so here um, I use a tape to hold the, the, a trade, which I'm going to be hanging a mass at point 80. So what are we expected to do in this experiment? First of all, you will find out the initial pointer reading. So we, we look at it, avoiding parallax error. We find out what will be the initial pointer reading. If you look at it very well, you're going to see that our initial pointer reading is at point 48.5. 48.5 so this is our initial pointer reading and I'm going to record it as a naught the original value before we start inserting mass so 48.5 is our initial pointer reading so having noted the initial pointer reading I'm now going to insert a mass of 50 gram this is a mass of 50 gram and once I do that you expect a depression to occur or for the horizontal meter rule once that depression occurs, the pointer is going to change from this particular position and then I'll find out the dis difference or the distance D between the initial pointer and the new balance point. <clears throat> I'll, I'll repeat that for other values of masses for 100, for 150, for 200, and for 250. So that's the first phase of the experiment. So I like that to come with me as we take our readings together. So now that we have the setup already, we are just going to quickly point. I'm putting the 50 gram mass and note the reading. So here is our 50 gram mass. Let me hang it. So here is the 50 gram mass hanging freely from the 80 cm point. So let us find out what will be the new reading. So here is what we have. You can all right. So you can take a look at it. So this is what we have here at point 51 as you can see we're trying to avoid parallax error at point 51 point okay i can really say 51.51.1 point, 51 .1, actually 51.1 .1. so that is our next reading for 50 grams so it means that on the table we're going to have a column where we're going to find the difference and write so to get the difference for 50 gram mass is going to be 51.5 by 51.1 minus 48.5 which is going to be on the table we'll do that at the end of the experiment but you can note down this as 51.1 so we are going to proceed by adding another 50 gram mass to make it a total of 100 grams so here is it again the 100 gram mass hanging freely from same position which is fixed for all through the experiment now we want to note the pointer reading at this point you can see that it is depressed a little bit more so what will be the reading on the second meter which is hanging vertical so if you take a look at that it's giving us 53.8 as you can see 53.8 recall that we're also going to be putting the difference on the table 53.8 so here is again another 50 gram mass added making it a total of 150 grams we want to find out our pointer reading. If you take a look at what we have here, you will note that our uh, reading on the meter rule is about 56, 56.9, as you are seeing it here, 56.9. I believe you can see 
56.9 as it is. Oh, I'm sorry about that. 57, 57 cm, 57 cm. So here is now the 200 gram mass hanging on the metal rod that is horizontal. We want to find out what we have here. If we check here, we have our pointer at 60. It's a little bit bouncing. Let's get it to be steady a bit. Okay. So this is our reading here at 60.2. 60.2, as you can see there, 60.2. Finally, we have here the 215 gram mass hanging and the pointer is still there. So let us check what the pointer reading will be. So to just to get it to be a little bit steady, so we have 60. So here is it here, 63.9, 63.9, as you can see the reading here. Now the second instruction or second part of this particular experiment would be to insert the mass into water so that we'll note the up thrust that will be acting on it. So we are going to repeat this, the whole procedure using um, water. Here is a beaker containing water here. So I'm going to be ensuring that the mass set of masses are deeply immersed inside the water so that we'll note the difference from when it was in air and when it was in the liquid so we can use it for subsequent calculations. So here, we, because some materials are not perfectly elastic, we are going to remeasure the starting point. You can see no mass is hanging. We will not assume that the original, start, um, original pointer reading for the air measurement is the same at the moment because it is a, it's possible that our, our metal is not perfectly elastic. So we'll take another reading to find out the new position of this particular metal. If you look at that, you'll note that our metal reading, you can see it here at 49.8, 49.8 exactly. So what did we get in the previous one? We got 48.5. And now the new pointer reading is 49.8. You can see there is a huge difference. But assuming that we, that was our reading would make our experiment very, 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 very wrong. So we are going to use this pointer reading for the second one, which is 49.8. So our A naught for this particular second reading is 49.8. Please ensure that you take note of that. And then we'll continue putting our mass and repeat the procedure again. All right, so here is our 50 gram mass. So you can see it is fully immersed inside water, as you can see here in the beaker containing water. What would be the pointer reading there? The pointer reading here is 52.1, 52.1 here. So we are going to record that for 50 gram mass in water, the pointer reading is at 52.1. Then we proceed to the second one, here is a hundred gram mass. You can see it is fully in water, right? And then, so let us find our reading. Our reading here is at point what? 54 point what? 54.4, as you can see there. The pointer reading is at 54.4. And then we proceed to 150 grams, as you see here, inside beaker. Make sure that it is not touching any part of the beaker. And then our pointer reading is at 56 point, what? 56.75, 56.8 approximately. So you see here, 56.8, sorry. Here is it. As we begin to wind off, here is our 200 gram mass. You can see firmly inside water, fully inside water, not touching any part of the beaker. So. We want to find out what is our pointer reading at 59.3. 59.3, as you are seeing there, 59.3. And then finally, our 250 gram mass, as you see here, fully inside water. So what is the pointer reading? Here we have 61.9, as you are seeing there, 61.9. So. We are going to quickly tabulate the readings for the two experiments and then we are going to answer the questions that follow. So just stay tuned so that you can see the breakdown as it is required from the question that is being asked. 
Taking a good look at it, you will notice that the mass there, which we used during the experiment in grams, is recorded 50, 100, 150, 200, and 250 grams, each also recorded. Now, the initial reading of the initial pointer reading in air is also recorded on top of the table as 48.5, while the initial pointer reading in water, A0, also is recorded as 49.8. You can see it to the right. And then the pointer readings for mass 50, 100, and so on is also recorded as A in CM on the table. And then the pointer readings for A prime, which is in water, is also recorded. Then we found the dif dis distance or the difference between the pointer reading and the original pointer reading, both in air and in water as D and D prime, all recorded in the correct decimal place. So with this table, we can we will quickly proceed to draw a graph. According to the question, we were told to plot a graph of D, which is the distance in air against the distance in water. That is the distance between the initial pointer reading or the difference between the initial pointer reading and um, the pointer reading when the mass was hung on the horizontal meter room. So that D for the vertical, that is for D of air on the vertical and D prime of water on the horizontal. So here is what our graph looks like. So taking a look at this graph, you will notice that it is a straight line graph that is expected to pass through the origin, as you can see. All the points are aligned and clean in a line. And then the axes are distinguished, as you can see. So if we use this graph now to deduce our slope, which will be the change in D against or over the change in D prime, that is the ratio of D to D prime, from what we drew, we are going to get 13.6 minus 24 for the vertical axis and then 10.8 minus 2.4 for the horizontal axis. Computing that since they both are of the same unit, then we would have our slope to be equal to 1.33. So there won't be any unit because they are going to cancel out. Now that we have deduced our slope, what were the precautions that we took during the experiment? I mentioned part of it in the conduct of the experiment. Number one, I avoided parallax error in reading the meter rule, and then I ensured that the horizontal meter rule wasn't vibrating. You can notice that during the experiment, we waited for it to be stable before we took our reading. So you ensure that the horizontal meter rule wasn't vibrating while taking your readings, and then also you could do well by also avoiding drought, air effect, or wind effect during the conduct of the experiment. Also, going forward, there are two short answer questions we'll be expected to answer. The first one would be, what does it mean to say that the density of paraffin was is 900 gram per cm cube and its relative density is 0.9? To answer this question, the relative density of paraffin was 0.9 means that that paraffin was of a given volume has a mass of 0.9 times that of the equal volume of water. Or in another way, you can say that the ratio of the mass of paraffin was to, to an equal volume of water is 0.9. Other than that, they also ask us to explain what the density means if it is 900 gram per cm cube. The density of paraffin was is 900 um, gram per cm cube means that the ratio of the mass of the paraffin to its volume is 900 gram per cm cube. Then finally, we also ask a question. It says, an object weighs 2.9 newton in air and 1.3 newton when completely immersed in water. Calculate its relative density. In this question, Note that the weight in air of that object is 2.9 newton, and the weight in water is 1.3 newton. So the first thing we are going to do is to find the upthrust in water. Since the weight in water is 1.3 newton, the upthrust in water will be the weight in air minus the weight in water, which will give us 2.9 minus 1.3, which will give us 1.6. So going straight to deduce the relative density, the relative density is going to be weight in air minus weight in air minus weight in water, which represents the upthrust, which is equal to 2.9 minus 2.9 plus 
2.9 divided by 2.9 minus 1.3, which is equal to 2.9 divided by 1.6. Final answer is 1.813. So this is the relative density of that particular object. So this is just all that we are asked in this particular experiment. Um, so many other experiments will be coming through shortly. Please just stay tuned, click the notification button so that anytime there is an update, you will receive. Thank you for staying true with us. We sincerely appreciate. Remain blessed.